Hello there and welcome to my YouTube channel Juliet McNeil Crafts. So today I am back with another hashtag all together now make um, where we are looking at crafting um, our way through lockdown um, and all the stress that that causes so we're trying to forget about that for a minute and just do some crafting together and that we're all going to share our makes and things like that. So today um, I'm also on a mission um, through this period of time that we are stuck in the house um, to try and use up some of my scraps and things that I've squirreled away. I'm just think, noticing I'm, I'm liberally um, painting onto my mat there. I may just get some paper to pop underneath. Right, so I have got my 13 arts gesso here and these are some boards. I've never actually bought the Spectrum more. Well actually I bought one small set of them once and wasn't overly keen. I think once you have used Copix <laughs> It's really difficult to then go on to use any other um, sort of branding. So, um, yeah, it's... <laughs> um, but I have... Oh, for some reason, there's some pink in my gesso. Um, as I've mentioned a few times, um, we are helping some friends out. It's going to be a while before we can do anything about it now with the current situation. Um, but we were helping some friends sort out a big, massive craft stash. Um, and we're kind of sorting through things out and we're going to organise a big sale and um, earn some money for the Highland Hospice. Um, but she was clearly a woman like um, myself who squirrelled lots of things away um, to use for a rainy day and um, I think when I was sorting out my craft room and realised that I actually have a whole shelf and a big box under another thing just of bits and bobs like this that I have squirreled away ready to use <laughs> ready to think I could alter that or do something with that but these are a nice weight board so when I saw them I did want to um, use them um, to do some altered art and some tags and I quite like leaving the little tops on there because I think it just adds extra extra interest so I am going to with one of these I'm just going to dry them off with my heat gum and I'm going to use the same sort of scraps on both but we're going to um, use the scraps in different techniques. Okay so I have given this one a second coat of gesso and I'm just going to put that aside to dry. I save bits and pieces like this because they are a really easy way of building up texture um, in a mixed media project. So yeah, <laughs> even things like this that you kind of think, oh yay, it's done. I can put that in the bin now <laughs> with a sense of achievement. I still keep. So it's about time some, <laughs> some of these things actually got used. So in on this tag here, I am going to um, use this as texture um, for for the project and on the other one I am going to att attempt to use it as a stencil I think. So yeah so we're going to be using this sort of same sort of rubbish as it were the same sort of leftovers and products so we started with the same base we're going to start with some leftover card from pop out kits and I've chosen sort of butterfly and flower themed for both of them. As I said, this one we are going to um, just stick down. So I'm going to stick this down here and let that, um, let that adhere down. And then we'll give this one another coat of gesso once this has stuck down. And then as I said, I'm going to use the other one as a stencil. And this one like this. And then I will try and use fairly similar techniques on both of them but just sort of slightly different and we can see what sort of different looks we get from using similar stash but in a slightly different way. So let's um, just glue this down. Probably should use like a gel medium or something but it takes time to dry and both of these are actually, it's, I mean it, it's quite late just now. Um, so I'm just going to sort of get these started and then leave them to dry overnight. And I'm going to be trying to get quite a bit of filming done in the next couple of days. Um, 
my husband's kindly going to try and let me have the bulk of the time up here and um, because he will be going back to work and I will have absolutely no time at all because not only is it school holidays but everybody's at home as the same with everybody else so for some that means lots of time to sort of spare and for others it means like <laughs> no time at all because <laughs> we're busy looking after everybody else but that's okay that's okay so I'm going to get a fresh brush because I seem to have something on that brush with it which is contaminating my gesso a little bit so again I'm just now going to go over this again um, which will darken that background a little bit um, or lighten it, sorry, make it more opaque so it'll look more um, more of a true white but it will also give this extra element that I have added on a little tooth so I'll just finish um, painting that up and then I will come back with the other tag okay so I have some Nouveau Mousses here which I've acquired again from this stash that I've been sorting out for this lady um, so if there has been pro so Nouveau Mousses are something that I fancy giving a try but to be honest I don't tend to normally buy um, coloured products I also have no idea how old these are um, they've not been opened so hopefully they'll still be usable um, but we'll see we'll see how we got on with them yeah I don't tend to buy coloured products I tend to you know, like stick to like my gessos and my um, gel mediums and things and then add pigment powders but I thought I would give them a try so I put a wee contribution in so yeah it still seems fairly usable okay so I'm going to start with the lightest colour first and then use this a bit like a stencil so let's see how we go on doing this could be interesting okay so I'm going to use the various different colours as I said these are ooh, I'm not sure if this is the consistency they're meant to be or not to be honest because um, I said I've acquired them. So what I've done with this um, lady stuff has I've not I've I've not kept well I feel like I have to, I have kept quite a bit of it to be honest. Um, but um, it's not masses because I don't really want to be adding more to the stash. Um, but I, I I it's not that I've just taken it. I have actually put um, a donation in to the charity that she that she wished it to go to so right that's kind of worked all right hasn't it right so let's do i'm going to do another little bit at the bottom here i'm kind of wishing i hadn't done it quite so square there but we'll we'll rectify that in a bit so yeah again i'm going to take some of the i was going to use the blue as well but i think i'm going to stick to the pink and the yellow okay let's grab a bit of this pink as well some of that over there so this yeah this is actually working fairly well as a stencil so I could probably use this as a stencil two or three times actually and um, before it would completely break apart so that's quite good as I said that's just looking a little bit too square so I'm just going to take some of these elements oops and just bring it bring it down a little bit and then Obviously, I will be leaving this, leaving this to dry overnight. So we've got that's looking okay, and actually, I think I'm just going to clean clean my knife off. Actually, I might get some little bit. He's just, just add a bit of texture as I said it's just looking a bit too clean and square for me just here so I'm actually just going to smoosh that a little bit just to make it look less less clean let's scrape some of that quite a nice product actually so it's, it's quite nice I think I've kind of got it in a state that it's okay to play with so I am going to leave that overnight now um, as I've said and I'm kind of wondering I've never really played with these mousses before so 
I don't, I've never actually watched them because quite often I have some idea of the products because I watch I watch quite a lot of crafty telly box. But um, it's not, so I'm wondering if I can sort of almost use them as quite a, quite a thick paint. And then I'm thinking that if we do that, it's kind of like we have used, kind of using similar products across the board, but in different ways. So that's kind of working. I don't know that I'd, we'll put some of it on and see what happens. I'll start off with, with the yellow. It is going on, so that's, that's something. And I have no idea what the plan with these will be, right? I've ended up with quite a big chunk of it there, but again, I can just, I'll pull it off and sort of pat it down like so for texture. Just playing. Instead of, this is the best thing to do with your products. I mean, it's great that you can kind of watch tutorials and things. Um, but to be honest, you get to know your products the best when you just sit and play and go, oh, I wonder if... And to be honest, that's how most techniques were kind of discovered in the first place. Um, people just sort of going, oh, I wonder. Or sometimes they're doing something and it was a complete accident. And it turned out, it turned out fine for them, so... Yeah. Feel free to play with your products. So this is me using up some of my stash. We're going to get very different effects um, with this. And as I said, what I'm going to try and do is use the same products on both tags, but use them a little bit um, differently. So I get this on, and then the same sort of bunched up at the back of the back of the um, paintbrush there. So I'll just grab that and dab it on. So I'm going to let that dry overnight and I will be back with you at some point tomorrow to finish off these, oops, to finish off these creations bit heavy handed there. So we will fix that by just doing that like so. <laughs> All sorted. Okay, see you soon. Okay, so I have some scraps of rice paper. Granted they are fairly big scraps, but scraps nonetheless. So I was going to use some of those um, on this um, project. So I just thought let's get a few bits and pieces of these in just for a little bit of added texture. I'm just ripping them down into smaller bits because I'm just going to randomly randomly stick those down. I'm kind of taking out the green part because I'm not overly fussed on having the green on it. I've just realised that I've not got um, my mediums out, so I will just grab those Sorry, now. So I've got my Dina Wakely um, gel medium, and I am just going to put a little bit underneath and a little bit on the top just to adhere that down. And because it is rice paper, it will still go into the grooves of the texture that we've created by using our leftover scraps. So it is all just about building the interest. At this moment in time I still have no plan other than I'm just trying to use bits of my stash up, little bits and pieces that I've got lying about here and there. I'm just trying to use them up and make something pretty with them. So that is the um, <laughs> sum total of all that's in my head at this moment in time but I do find once I start playing, especially if I play with no purpose, sometimes when I find I've got an idea in my head that's when I get all wound up because uh, it doesn't work as well um, in real life as it did <laughs> as it did in my head and um, but this sort of playing um I just kind of I'm just having a lovely time and uh, faffing about and not worrying overly and then what I tend to find is I hit a certain point of the project um where it, it where I know it suddenly sort of hits me all right okay that's what I want to do with it but at this moment in time um yeah I'm not overly thinking about it now these bits I quite like the obviously because I've used the Nouveau Mousse um, through it as a stencil so I kind of want to preserve the stencil bits a little bit um, so I'm going to try and maintain some of that okay and I think what I might do is just maybe grab some threads and some ribbons and different things like that and we can um, maybe put some, um, what, am I, what am I saying, um, a bit of clear gel medium on it and then maybe try some mica powders and things that are similar to 
similar to the colors that we've that we've used so far so yeah on both of these I've used the the rice paper in a similar way but um, so I'll see I'll see what we'll do with the what we'll do with the the rest of it I'm just gonna bring that round because I'll no doubt at some point do something with the back of this normally I just maybe put a bit of colored colored paper tear a bit more of this it is easier to tear if you just put a bit of uh, water down first but um, I'm just I was just tearing it because it was it was there okay So, I mean, what I can do is always pull that bit of card out again and stencil again. Um, so we've got different layers of the stenciling. So that might be a bit of an idea as well. But we'll just, we'll see. We'll see how we go. Okay. So I'm just going to let that dry a second. I'm going to have a little rummage around my stash and uh, try and have a figure out what I'm going to do next. Okay. So I have got some lace. I never quite know what to do with lace. <laughs> And yet I seem to still manage to acquire some in my stash. So what I thought I'd do, because I'm, what I'm trying to do is use the same products in both tags, but use them slightly differently. So what I'm going to do is on um, this one, I think, what I will do is I'm going to stick the lace down and I'm going to put the butterflies over it. And then I'm going to knock it all back um, with gesso and then do my colouring on top of that. Um, and what I will do, oh sorry, that's a, what I will do with this one is um, I will put the gesso on first and do the colouring first and um, then have the lace and the flower, the butterflies as the sort of main colour feature. Um, so the colour from these will pop. They'll sort of like be kept in their then their natural form without without um, being covered. So I'm hoping that makes sense. It'll, hopefully it'll make sense as I. Um, <laughs> As I continue, I don't know that I've explained that very well. Yeah, so part of, on one tag it's going to become a background texture and not the focal point. And then the other one it's going to be the focal point. I think that's probably the easiest way of describing that. So I'm just going to stick that down with my gel medium there. And then I was just going to put the three, three butterflies going up like that. So... And then once that has dried, I will knock it back um, with gesso and colouring. So I'll just stick those, stick those down. And then I'll just leave that to the side to dry and we'll work on the other tag. So we're sort of doing the techniques in reverse on the two different tags. Okay. So I will now put that to the side. Okay, so on this one, what I'm going to do is grab some clear gesso. Sorry, my chair is squeaking away there. I'm going to grab some clear gesso. I'm just going to paint over this whole thing with the clear gesso to provide um, a tooth and a surface for um, the colouring medium, whatever colouring medium I end up choosing to use to adhere to. So I will just do that off camera because I don't think it's something that you particularly need to see in detail. I'm just going back to this one a second because I suddenly remembered I was wanting to put um, thread um, around the bottom going horizontally and once that butterfly is dried it'll be a pain to have to sort of take it off and uh, redo it. So I am just going to put, um, I've got some pink glitter thread, I like using glitter thread for this, it's uh, something a bit, a bit different. 
because um, I know that a lot of people do this with like string or normal thread and it happens to be something that I have in my stash because I used to do like a lot of sewing and cross stitch and bits and pieces like that before paper crafting took hold so yeah I'm just going to add these elements as well because I've got the gel medium on that already it's going to it's going to stick okay and I'm going to put um so I've got the pink and I'm going to put this gold down as well so I've got lots of things creating texture. We've got that background that we put on with the cardboard to start off with. I've got the lace and now I have got some thread. So I'll just do, do one more bit at the back there. Okay, and then I might secure that down with tape in a bit. And all I'll do is I'm just going to stick that back down with another blob of gel medium. Okay, so this is the one with the clear gesso on it and I am just going to grab, I might put some mica powders on this as well but for the minute I am grabbing, this is indigo blue, their um, matte paint and this is banana custard, I do like this colour so I'm kind of going to stick with the sort of yellows and pinks that blended together should make a coral so I'm just going to put that on first and then I have again these are paints that I've acquired so a lot of the stuff that I've got now I've sort of inherited mm, it's quite dry but we'll see how we go so these are some silkies and then I'm going to attempt to spray everything with water and see how it moves see if we get a bit of movement um, with the piece and actually I might end up doing a little bit more stenciling again once we've done once we've done this we'll see we'll see what it's looking like see if I'm happy right let's say uh, get some water on this see if we can get a bit of bit of movement going it always just looks a bit more natural if the paint's been allowed to do its own thing I think sometimes when we paint it on ourselves it can look quite contrived but if we just let it move around and do its thing um, that's where we see like really interesting things happening and we should see the paint going in, in amongst all the various elements of that there so I will let that dry I'm just having a play throwing everything that <laughs> throwing everything that I've got at it <laughs> I'm still seeing some of the packaging coming through um, so I'm wanting to make sure that every part is coloured because as I said we're still seeing the um, packaging come through so I've just put on a little bit of um, distress oxide there over the areas that I need, need to be coloured over so I'm getting there um, and what I may do once we have got more colour on is I might dry brush with white gesso because we've lost all the lovely um, colours that we had going on before now. These silkies are quite thick. I was going to, I'm just wondering if I can just put blobs of it in various places and then I'm going to get some so I've got buttercup well. and rose from um, Luscious and I'm just going to generously tap a load of a load of that and then when we um, you don't need a lot but I'm just deciding to go for it um, and then when we um, spray it with water we'll see how the powders and the paint and the oxides all mix who knows what will happen but that's the fun of it because as I said, this isn't something with a plan. I have no idea how I want the finished product to look. I'm literally just playing it with my products and seeing what happens. Um, and sometimes that's the best part with um, doing that. You just, yeah, no idea what will happen. Just learning to use your products and different things. So the thing with now adding those mica powders on top of the paints is that I now, I'm not sure if that picks up on camera, it might do once it's dry, but we now have sort of pockets of real sheen, which looks quite nice. So again, just going to allow that to dry. 
Okay, so right now I feel like I've got a bit of a hot mess going on here. <laughs> so let's get some gesso onto this. Um, I'm just going to try and dry gesso this so that we can pick up um, some of that texture, hopefully, that um, we've put down at the beginning, but it's just will become a bit lost. Now I'm getting some interesting effects there because look there was a bit of paint that was still wet so I'm just going to work with that. I'm not going to worry about it. I'll just need to make sure that I clean my brush now. Oh actually if I got a different brush I'll just get a different brush. <laughs> Why clean? <laughs> I spent four days doing that. I don't need to keep doing that. <laughs> Actually, I've been quite good since I have cleaned my craft space. I have actually been quite good at sort of um, tidying up a little bit as I go. Don't bit of a novel idea. I'm not quite sure how it's gonna, how long that's gonna last, but you know, we'll see. We will see what happens. So yeah, trying to bring a bit of that texture back. I don't know that I'm doing it an overly good job of it. I think possibly because um, it's still not completely dry. It's not working overly well but we will get there. So what I'm going to do is I'm also just going to grab another um, another oxide. I'm just going to just ink round the edges to draw the eye in and give it a bit of a frame. I may, well I was going to say I may at this stage also put my black line border round but to be honest um, it's all still a bit wet so it's probably not the best idea. I might actually have to leave this to dry and leave the other one to dry and just maybe start filming another project just to give this proper time to, to do it properly so we will see how how we go. Or what I may do actually is leave that like so and then let's get the embellishments stuck down on this one and then they're both at a similar a similar stage so let's get so I'm pretty much going to do the same layout as I did on the other tag so I'm just going to put a bit of lace there, a bit of lace at the bottom, wrap some thread around and put some of my butterflies on. But since you've already watched me do that once, I'll just do that off camera. Okay, so this is how the two projects are looking side by side. Um, so this one, um, we're going to leave the elements standing out. And this one, we're going to knock the whole thing back with gesso and then colour it. So I'm just going to pop this one to the side um, while we work on this one. So now I'm just going to cover the whole thing in um, gesso. So I'm concentrating more on the embellishments. They need a fairly thick layer because obviously the mediums are going to go over them. I'm not too worried about the side because it's had um, it's had um, gesso on it and it's already sort of had its first layer of mediums and things like that but as I said we're just sort of looking at using the same products um, on the same sort of tag, same design but using it slightly different ways so you can see the various options and how things um, turn out with that so I'm just going to as I said, get this, get this on. I'm more concerned with the embellishments and things. I might have to restick that butterfly down. It's moving slightly, but I think I'm a bit over keen to <laughs> get going with this. So I'll let that dry. And whilst that is um, drying, I'm just going to pull the other one in a little bit because I was trying to do some um, dry brushing on it to get some of that texture back and um, I wasn't really getting it and that was most likely because the project was still fairly um, still wasn't quite dry enough basically so I'm just going to grab it now that it's a bit drier I'm just taking a tiny little bit of gesso because I don't want loads but I just want to sort of bring back um, those texture elements that we added 
in the beginning. So I've got, I'm holding my brush quite far back and I am um, moving fairly quickly. That was a bit heavy there, but I'll take it out with my fingers. Moving fairly quickly and I'm just trying to catch the edges of those areas that had been um, stenciled and things, just to try and catch the edges of it so we can still see still see that texture coming through and the, the wrinkles of the um, the wrinkles of the paper and as I said the, the edges of the texture. Okay so we'll just move that back over here and um, that one will be down to finishing touches fairly soon and um, we can come back with this one. Okay so as with the other one I'm going to get out the indigo blue banana custard and I am going to use the Silky's um, pink lace. So I'm just going to grab that and um, brush that on to various parts of the project and then we will let the water um, do its stuff. So I'm going to do the exact same process that I did before. Um, so we'll do this first, then we'll grab a bit of these silkies. They're really quite thick. <laughs> see, I'm not sure if that's what they're meant to be like because I've sort of inherited them. Um, but we'll work with it. Okay, so I'm going to put some of these silkies in various places as well. And then we will see what happens when we spray it with water, which is just here. I'm just keeping my thumb on that butterfly because it's not overly secure at the minute. Okay. I'm just allowing that paint to drip and move, trying to move the project as much as possible. I quite like doing this in that you find that like in amongst the threads and in amongst the lace the, pa the paint is catching. So you do get quite an interesting, interesting effect from doing that. So I'm going to let that dry. Okay, I'm quite liking how this is turning out. Um, I'm liking the way that um, the colours are catching in everything. That's, um, it's making for some quite interesting things um, going on. So as with last time, I'm now going to add the mica. They're the same colours, so it kind of made me think, what's the point? <laughs> when you've got the point, the um, the paints going in, but there's a contrast between the fact that the paints are um, matte and the the these powders have loads of mica in them, so you get this sort of pop of sheen. Um, and so especially if the mica sort of puddle in different areas um, to where the paint's been, you get that, as I said, um, it just looks a little bit more organic um, rather than just the fact it's it's all been painted with a um, an iridescent thing. You just sort of get this occasional blast of pearlescent thing in the middle of the project, which I think looks... Um, I quite, just quite like the way that looks. It's a bit like when I did the D Jane Davenport journal the other day. Um, I used the normal watercolours, but then I also sort of splashed in some of my um, ones from uh, Floating Marshmallow um, because they had that pearlescent thing. And then it, when it dries, you use, as I said, you just, just sort of get this little pop of colour. Um, okay, so we will dry that off as well and then the last thing I will do is just go around with the fossilised amber and ink that so that they're both at the same sort of stage um, yeah and we can see the contrast okay so this is how the two pieces are looking at this moment in time at this particular moment in time I'm preferring this one the way this one's working um, but what I'm going to do now is on this occasion, occasion I know we've sort of been trying to use the same stash but different ways but um, I always find, no matter what the piece is, that doing some sort of shadowing makes such a difference. Um, it's just a natural thing. If I put my hand, like if I do that, Alice Keegan does this all the time. You can see the shadow on my hand. It's so much darker. And that always happens. When you have something in front, 
you naturally will always create a shadow behind. Um, and it's one of the tips that helps to make our work look more realistic, make more sense, as if we do that basic bit of um, colour theory, um, is that we add that shadow. So it does two things. It um, makes it make more sense, but also the darker colour will then push the lighter colour forward. So that's when we tend to get much more depth and interest in our project. So I have got an ink tense pencil here. I've gone for a paler one, um, because obviously it's quite a pale project. I don't particularly want to go in with black, although I may do it later just to sort of edge the full project and give it contrast. At the minute it's looking quite pale, so it might be what the project needs, but we will just see about that. Um, so I'm, I'm using Crimson 0530. So what I'm going to do is just pop you on fast forward now as I add the shadow to both the projects. So I think it looks a lot better already um, by the shadowing. You may have noticed in the speed up I did actually bring in the Shiraz 0600 and moved on to a darker shade just for some of it. I'm still feeling it's needing something to make it pop. I don't know if I want to go full on with um, black ink. I may do yet but I'm just going to try with distress ink um, black suit for just now and just try doing that and see if that's enough um, to make it pop. If not I will have some a sort of black ink running into the project but it's still needing something to lift it I think. Um, plus this sort of thing it draws the eye in and so sometimes that can be enough um, to make a difference. So I'm just going to add that round the sides. Um, just to create a vignette sort of look. Okay, I've got a spare bit of thread that's coming loose there. I'm thinking that I might actually have to go the full hog and do some black drips. Let's see. Yeah. It's, it's just needing something. So I'll bring this in. I think it has made a difference, but it's, I don't know, it's not quite right yet. And if it's not quite right, you just have to keep going till it is. <laughs> Even if that means painting over your project with black gesso and starting it again. <laughs> it's better, that definitely looks a little bit better, but I do think I want to grab my black ink. Okay, I've got my Delusions spray bottle. I'm just going to put the spray part to the side and I've got a little brush because I want to go fairly canny to start off with just to see if it's what it's needing but I just have a feeling that we need a little bit of a stronger stronger rack. I should move that project out of the way because uh, I've already dripped onto it. Right, where's my wee spray bottle? Just feel like we are needing a little bit of depth to the project. And I think a little bit of black might be just what we need. Yeah. That's looking a bit better. I'll maybe put a bit on this side as well. 
travelling across the string actually, that's quite nice. Maybe get a bit more to encourage that, because that, that looks quite, quite like that look. Just emphasise the string a little bit. Okay, I think that's helped. I was liking it before, but I wasn't overly impressed. So I'm going to leave that one to the side. I do think that has made a difference, and we'll do the same with the other one. And then I might go round the project again with the black suit. So I'm trying to emphasise this corner because um, I think that is one of the bits that needs needs a little bit of definition. That'll sort of run in. Okay. And we'll do the same here. Now this is going to move differently because um, this was the one that had the um, off cuts of card. It's amazing the difference that black has made. I was just saying that I was doing a Facebook Live earlier today and I was just saying that quite often when I teach a class and um, they make something that's all nice and pretty and then I suggest putting black on it to make it pop. <laughs> They'll look at me with absolute terror but it does suddenly those bright colours look a whole lot better um, because they've got that contrast going on. I'm just going to add a bit more bit more there. Like that. Run and catch the various elements there. Okay. Right, I'm just going to let okay. that dry. I do think that looks so much better. Again, it's that colour theory that if you have um, something dark, then the um, the the darkness recedes to the background, so it's the science of it. The darkness recedes to the background and then it pushes the brighter colours forward. So now I have been quite brave with that black. I'm going back in with this um, Distress ink, but much more heavy handed because I was a bit unsure before because I wasn't sure what it was going to do to the project. But now, of course, I've got that black element in, so it is going to work really well. Now, you can see the difference with the way your medium, where the colouring behaves. So this lace over on this side um, had gesso put over it um, for us to sort of put the colour on top of the lace. And you can see that the ink is sort of seeped behind that so that's how it behaves if gesso is on first with this one we didn't put any gesso on the actual elements and so it's sunk into the lace and we've now almost got a black lace so we've got two very different effects and that's why it's worth having a play with your products because they behave different ways with different um, mediums with doing textures a different way again like this one we've found and this one we've got a lot of emphasis here where the black has run across here mostly because that's where the main texture is but on this one because we use the cut out cardboard it's fine nooks and crannies to find itself in before hitting the strings so they haven't become as predominant um, although we've just done it the exact same technique with the exact same layer um, the the colour has run differently down the page because of the way that we have used the texture. So that is worth, as I said, having a play um, with, with that. So I'm just really darkening um, the edges of this and then I'm going to come in again with my black pen and get that even darker and create a real definite edge um, to this because although that, that is black it's still quite a chalky look especially as it's going over on gesso but obviously my pro marker is an alcohol ink so it is going to sit differently it's going to sit on top of that rather than sink into it like the watercolors will so again knowing that that's how my medium will play with this i know that it, because it's alcohol it's going to sit on top i know that i'm going to get a very definite black line and it's not going to look as grey so contrast of the two I think works really well and I am going to do the same on this side as well again just to keep building up that definition so what do you think did it did it look better once the black was added did you prefer that or did you prefer how it looked before when it was all soft and pretty because everything's a matter of taste isn't it some people might not like the contrast as much.
and that's okay. You do, you create your art as to how you like it. But I think they're both pieces. Now I'm favouring this one. <laughs> so it's funny as you go through the project, um, how you can feel about it. So I'm going to just add um, a bit of a doodly border. Um, it is over that black. Um, so it's a very subtle element. We might find that if I did white doodles that they would be more noticeable but it still it just adds an extra element of detail um, for the eye to look at. So I'll just go around all of that. Now what I'm going to do is just pause the camera a little second because I want some sort of wording going across there. Okay, so I have these stickers here which don't even have any sticky left on them. <laughs> and I think I bought these when I started my crafting journey. So they're, yeah, they're probably about 18 years old. Um, but obviously I don't want them those sort of bubblegum colours. Although to be honest... It kind of goes, but it's not really the look I'm going for. So what I'm going to do is grab some black gesso and cover these in black gesso. And then I am going to grab my gilding wax and I am going to use that. So this is good. Um, means I am gradually using up my stash. It's these things that I'm wanting to use up. I mean, as I said, they're not even sticky on the back anymore, so we will be needing some sort of glue to stick them down. So, so that's the other thing as well. If you've fallen out of love with some of your stash, um, don't think, all right, that's it, I've got to get rid of it now. Um, just think of a different way of using it. You know, if we can alter cardboard and we can alter, you know, different bits and pieces that we find and turn them into something beautiful, we can alter the craft stash that we have um, into something different. So that's kind of what I am doing here. So I'm just going to dry that off and then I'll come back with my gilding wax. Okay. So look how good that looks. This um, and that was that was some painting I did in a Facebook Live earlier today. Yes, yeah, so this is a bit of a drop sheet, but actually I'm thinking that drop sheet's going to look really good as part of a journaling page. So I think this is at the stage now that I might uh, just pop that away and save that for another crafting day. So everything gets used. And that's good because obviously that's Dilution Paints on there and that's some of my good gesso. And I've got, you know, um, looks like oxides and bits and pieces on there. So, you know, it means all of those lovely products as well. They're not going to waste because they've ended up on my drop sheet and I will use the drop sheet in another project. So I'll put that to the side and I'll maybe do that with you. But I just, I love that. I kind of want to tear that out and have that as a, as a feature somewhere. Look how good those look. You know, they've gone from like sort of a sickly sweet baby sticker to, um, you know, look at that gold, isn't it amazing looking? Okay, I love this Pebio stuff. I, well, if you've watched my channel, you know that I do lots of it. Now, that has come off a little bit. Probably the gesso wasn't quite dry, so I just need to fix that a little bit. So we've got a bit of a, a um, little bit of green there popping through so I'll just leave that a second. Right I need to find something to buff my um, the gilding wax up with. Okay so I have buffed all of that up and I am going to just add that one in there. I'm going to get my glue out because as I said um, these had already lost their sticky as soon as I pulled off them off the sheet I could tell that um, all the stickiness had gone it was a thing of the past clearly the sticky doesn't <laughs> work for more than 18 years so I'm just going to pop that one down on there okay and then I am going to do this one. 
Oh, look, it's so pretty. So I think now that I've put the gold on, I might add a few touches of gold to the edges and possibly onto some of the lace. And then we'll have a few gold splashes. And then I think that might be us. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it's not been too boring watching um, sort of the same thing being done on two projects. But hopefully, as I said, I'm wanting it to sort of um, show you two different ways or the, the fact that there's lots of different ways um, to use the same product. So, yeah, it's looking good. It's looking good. I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy. Okay, so I'm just going to grab some of the gilding wax again. And just, I'm going to pop that on some of the edges. Not on all of them, just in little, just in little sections. Again, I'm going to think of my rule of three, so I'm going to have a big bit here. And then we've got a little bit in that corner there, and then I will put another bit up here. And that's just enough to pull the eye across the whole page. And then what I might do is knock some of that black back a little bit on the lace by just adding um, the gold. I'll just sort of pick up a few of those future elements of the lace. Yeah, pretty, pretty. So again, I'm thinking of the rule of threes, so I'm just going to put a little bit down here. Okay, and then I want some in that top corner here to lift it. And I love putting gold on um, packaging. I don't know what it is. I just love the irony of um, something being like a really, you know, it being junk and then you've got a really precious metal on it. I think that's fab. I couldn't actually find a cloth. And I'm in the loft and I'm locked into the loft. I can't get back down just to grab it. And I don't really want to disturb my husband just to ask for a bit of kitchen roll. So I find a bit of um, tissue paper. And that's fine because it's probably got some really interesting patterns on it and we can use that in another project too. So I'm just giving that a wee buff with that because this is furniture grade. So now, seeing them both together, again. Now I've gone back to liking this one more. So isn't that funny how as a project moves <laughs> you can start to see it really differently. So the last thing I'm going to do is I've got my Kiritaki Gansi Tambis here. I am going to take the gold and I am going to just do a few gold splatters just to finish that off. Seeing as we've brought the gold in now with the the gilding wax and things. And I think we like especially with this one you've got the gold and the butterfly elements anyway. Okay. So I'll just let that dry because it looks so much better once it's dry and we can yeah finish off there. Okay so that is the two tags together now. It is looking pretty good. Um but I'm thinking that it's it's needing something to lift it. So I'm thinking that as well as the gold splashes, we actually need some white splashes too. So I am using my correction fluid that I got from the pound shop. Tell you, it's like what I really want to do is go to the range and get another white uniball pane so I can have one in the loft and one downstairs. But I have a plethora of wonderful craft things that I can use and it's better that everybody stays safe but it's funny the different things that you'd be like, you think that that's one of the first things I'm going to go out <laughs> and get, <laughs> a white gel pen. Who'd have thought? Right so yes I definitely think those white splashes have just lifted it. I did want the gold and I'm glad I've got them but it was, just, again we'd lost the contrast a little bit and I think that you can't get more of a contrast than black and white so. I'm just turning the tag a little bit as well, just so that all the splatters aren't going in the same direction. I do find that that helps to make the piece look a bit better. So anyway, I'll put those back the right way around. Yeah, that's better. It's just lifted them ever so slightly. So those are my two tags. I hope you've enjoyed the concept of looking at the um, exact same products and look how different they look. Um, so yeah. 
um, I hope you've enjoyed that. So this is part of the hashtag altogether now. I'm sorry I've been a little bit remiss in getting um, some of the my makes up. I was doing it daily and I've just fallen a little bit behind. But that's due to some good things. It's because I'm going to be on Hachanda very soon. So I've just been putting some designs um, together for that. So it's kind of distracted me a little bit. But... Um, if you would like to join us, please do use the hashtag, hashtag altogether now. There is more details of what this is all about in the description box below. If you have enjoyed it here, please do consider liking and subscribing and I'll be back again very soon. Okay, take care then and goodbye.